Good morning, friends. It's me, Mrs. O, and I'm so happy to see you guys again today. Um, welcome to my home, and thank you for coming to share a book with me. And so I've been sharing some of my favorite books that I used to read with my son. And one of my favorite characters, who's a character? That's somebody that's in what? The character is somebody that's in a story. And one of my favorite characters of all times, can you guess? Think about it. One of my favorite characters is Curious. Do you know? George. I love Curious George. And you know what? Even my son's name is George. But I didn't name him after the monkey. I named him after his grandpa. But anyway, this story today is called Curious George Gets a Medal. So let's take a look. This is George. He lived with his friend, the man with the yellow hat. He was a good little monkey, but he was always curious. That's why we call him Curious George. So what does curious mean? I bet you're curious. I bet you are. I'm curious. Curious means I want to know things. I want to know about stuff. Are you curious? So Curious George was a good little monkey, but he was very curious, always curious. George was alone this morning, and he was looking at a picture when the doorbell rang. What do you think's gonna happen? It was the mailman. Look at that. Here is a letter for you, he said. Put it on your friend's desk. He'll read it to you when he comes home. George was curious. It was not often that somebody wrote him. Look. Too bad he could not read the letter. But maybe he could write one himself. In the top drawer of the desk, there was paper. Look at him getting in that desk. And ink and a fountain pen. George sat down on the floor and he began to write, but the pen was dry. So this is an old fashioned kind of pen where you, it was made out of like feathers and you would put it in ink and then you would write. So today we have pens like this, but this was a fountain pen. Okay. It needed ink. Look at that. George would have to fill it he got a funnel from the kitchen and started pouring ink. But instead of going into the pen, the ink spilled all over and made a big blue puddle on the floor. It was an awful mess. Look at that. Oh, look at his face. He's like, oh, what have I done? What have I done? Okay, and then look here. So it says quickly, George got the blotter from the desk, but that was no help. The puddle, grew, the puddle grew bigger and bigger all the time. George had to think of something else. Quick, George, think. Why, soap and water. That's what you clean it up with, he thought to himself. From the kitchen shelf, he got a big box of soap and powder and poured all the powder all over the ink. What do you think's gonna happen next? Holy cow, he's making a mess. Okay, but he's thinking. Okay, look. Then he pulled the garden hose through the window. Do you think that's a good idea, boys and girls? He opened the tap and he sprayed the water on the powder. So he turned on the hose. Bubbles began to form and then some lather, look at the lather is when all those bubbles form up like that. And more lather, and more lather, and more lather. Oh my, Let's see what happens. In no time, look at that. The whole room was full of lather. 
it was so full that George had to escape in a hurry. He had to get away. Look at all that lather. When he was safely out of the house, he first turned off the tap. He didn't want to waste water. But what next? How could he get rid of all the lather before his friend came home? Remember, he's got to get rid of all that lather before his friend with the big yellow hat comes home. George sat down in the grass and he thought for a long time. Finally, he had an idea. He would get the big shovel and shovel all the lather out of the window. Does that sound like a good idea to you guys? Sounds like a good idea to me. Let's see what happens. But where was the lather? While George had been outside thinking, it had all turned into water. And now the room looked like a lake and the furniture like islands in it. The shovel was no use. A pump was what George needed. Oh boy, he's gotten himself into some trouble. A pump was what he needed to get the water out and he knew just where to find one. He had seen a portable pump down at the farm down the road. Look at him run. He's running down all the way to that farm down the road. And what's he getting again? A pump. And the pump's gonna pump the water out of the living room. Let's see how that works out. The farmer was away working in the fields. Nobody noticed George. When he got the pump out of the shed, it was heavy. He would need help to pull it all the way back to the house. Who can he get to help him, I wonder? Hmm. Let's think about this. Oh, maybe, maybe he could tie the goat to the pump and make her pull it. But just as George was about to slip the loop over the goat's head, he was hurled through the air. Look at that. And he landed near next to a pen full of pigs. So he was hurled, which means he went, whoa. Okay, I don't think the goat was happy about being tied to a rope. The biggest pig, look at that, the biggest pig was standing near the gate. What if George opened the gate just enough to let him out? Oh my, does that sound like that's gonna be a good thing? Okay, a big pig could easily pull a small pump. Carefully, George lifted the latch. Oh my, what do you think's gonna happen? So carefully, George lifts the hatch. And before, oh my, he knew it, all the pigs had burst out of the pen and they were grunting and they were squealing <clears throat> and they were trying to get away as fast as they could. Can anybody make a pig noise? I know how to make one. It's kind of silly, but you go, <laughs> have you heard that? Can you make a pig noise? Okay, ready? George was delighted. He had never seen anything like it. For the moment, all his troubles were forgotten, but now the pigs were all gone and not a single one was left to help him with the pump. Look at all those smiles on the pigs' faces. They're like, woo, we get to go on an adventure. Those are some happy pigs getting out of that pen. Okay. What next? Luckily, there were cows grazing nearby. Cows were gentle and they were strong and it would mean nothing to them It would mean nothing to a cow to pull the pump for him. Aw, this time George was right. The cow did not mind being tied to the pump. She even let him climb on her back and off they went. George was glad now he would soon be home, pump out the room and everything would be all right. Do you think everything's gonna be all right? I wonder. What do you think is going to happen next? So the cow's pulling the pump and they're heading back and look at the beautiful rose the cow has. You think everything's going to be all right? Let's see. 
Meanwhile, meanwhile, the farmer and his son heard, had heard all the squealing of the pigs and they rushed home from the fields and now they had their hands full catching all the pigs. Not until the last pig was safely in the pen did they have time to look around. They looked around and what do they think they see? What do they see? What did they see? They saw all the way in the background. Can you guys see that? Let me see. There you go. <gasps> a little monkey riding on their cow, making off with their pump. What do you think they thought? A little monkey riding on their cow, pulling a pump. Let's see what happens. <laughs> so the chase was on. George and the cow were ahead at first, but the pump was slowing them down probably because the pump was heavy. The pump was slowing them down. The farmers were getting closer and closer, looking closer and closer. Now they had almost caught up with them. But where was George? Look, now the cow's all by himself, pulling the pump. The farmers are chasing him. But where do you think that silly George is? Where do you think, boys and girls? Where could he hide right there? Did somebody say pajamas? I bet he hid in those pajamas. Let's see. Hold on, we'll see. I'll give you a little hint. I've read this book. Okay, <gasps> there he is, hiding in the pajamas. So here he was, hiding in a shirt. The farmers had run right past him. But on their way home, they had to come back over the same road. George did not feel safe in his hiding place. Just then, a truck came rattling down the road. Okay? George jumped aboard. Monkeys are good at jumping. Have you ever seen a monkey jump? They're good at jumping. And was gone before the farmers had a chance to see him. So George jumped on the, aboard the, the truck. He was good at jumping and he was gone before the farmers had a chance to see him. Now look at this. The truck drove to a part of town that George had never seen before. At last, it stopped in front of a very large building. See that building? It was the museum. Have you ever been to a museum? What's a museum? Like the Natural History Museum or an art museum or a science museum? Raise your hand if you've been to a museum. Okay. It was the museum. George did not know what a museum was, but he was what? What do you think he was? Are you saying curious? Because he's curious George. So he was curious. And while the guard was busy reading his paper, George slipped inside. He walked up the steps and into a full, a room that was full of all sorts of animals. So look, he's going into the museum. And then it says he walked up the steps and into a room full of all sorts of animals. At first, George was scared, but then he noticed they didn't move. They were not alive. They were stuffed animals put into the museum so that everybody could get a good look at them. Okay. What do we have here? I see a whale. <gasps> I see a dinosaur. I see a giant turtle. What is that, boys and girls? Oh, that's an owl. Does anybody know how an owl goes? What does an owl say? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, look at the dinosaur. What does this say? Dinosaur extinct. What does extinct mean? Think about it. Do we see any dinosaurs anywhere? No. Extinct means they no longer are on earth. And then what does this say? Do not touch. Do not touch because they don't want to hurt the museum pieces. And then there's the baby dinosaur. So in the next room, George saw something so enormous. What is it, that dinosaur? It took his breath away. It was a dinosaur. George was not scared this time. He knew it was not real. He looked at the dinosaur and then at the baby dinosaur. And then he saw the palm tree full of nuts. George liked nuts. Uh-oh. 
Suddenly he felt very hungry. Do you see the nuts up in the palm tree? Suddenly he felt very hungry. He had missed lunch that day because he was on quite an adventure. He would climb up and just then he heard footsteps and he had to hide again. But where is he going to hide this time? Look at that. So a family came in to look at the dinosaur. They paid no attention to the little monkey who was standing there. Look at him. He's hiding like he's part of the exhibit. The monkey did not move. He stood so still that they thought he was just another stuffed animal. And then what happens? George was glad when they were gone. Now he could pick the nuts. He climbed up the dinosaur's neck and he started to pull, but the nuts wouldn't come off. George did not know that they were not real either. He pulled harder and harder. The tree began to sway. Oh my, what do you think is going to happen now? Crash! <gasps> down came the tree on the dinosaur's head. Down came the dinosaur and down came George. Guards came rushing in from all sides and underneath the fallen dinosaur, they found a little monkey and they pulled him out of there and they brought him to Professor Wiseman. There's Professor Wiseman. He was the director of the museum. Professor Wiseman was terribly angry. Lock that naughty monkey up right away, he said, and take him back to the zoo. He must have run away from there. He wasn't very happy, was he? Because what happened? Did Curious George touch the exhibit? He touched those things and the signs that do not touch. And listen to this. George was carried off in a cage and he felt so ashamed. He almost wished he were dead, but suddenly the door opened. George! Somebody shouted. It was his friend, the man with the yellow hat. Isn't it true friends always come to help us when we need it? It seems you got yourself into a lot of trouble today. So he said, it seems like you got yourself into a lot of trouble today. Do you guys think that George got into a lot of trouble today? I think so. But maybe this letter here will get you out of it. It's from Professor Wiseman. He needs your help for an experiment. Mm. I found it on my desk at home, but I couldn't find you anywhere. So I came here to talk to the professor. And this is what the letter said. How funny is that? So the letter that started all this curiosity with George, caused George to be curious, was from the professor who's so mad at him right now. And so now it's going to tell us what, this, what the letter says. Dear George, a small spaceship has been built by our experimental station. It is too small for a man, but it could carry a little monkey. Would you be willing to go up in it? What do you think? What do you think about George? He's curious. Do you think he's going to be curious about a spaceship and going up in a spaceship? He said, I have never met you, but I hear that you are a bright little monkey who can do all sorts of things, and that is just what we need. See the letter? So they need a bright little monkey. What does it mean to be a bright little monkey? Does it mean he shines like a light if he's bright? That's another way of saying he's a smart little monkey. So if he's a bright little monkey, and I'm sure all of you have been called bright little monkeys who can do all sorts of things, and that is just what we need. We want you to do something nobody has ever done before. Bail out of a spaceship in flight. Bail out of a spaceship in flight? Holy moly. So they want him to jump out of the spaceship while it's flying. What do you think? Do you think George is gonna be curious? You think he's gonna be afraid? Or do you think he's gonna do it? Raise your hand if you think he's going to do it. I think he's probably going to do it. Okay. When we flash you a signal, you will have to open the door and bail out with the help of emergency rockets. 
So he's going to bail out, which means he's going to jump out with the help of emergency rockets. We hope that you are willing and that your friend, who's his friend? That man with the big yellow hat. That your friend will permit you to go. Gratefully yours, Professor Wiseman, director of the Science Museum. So what do you guys think? You think he's going to go? So you are George, Professor Wiseman said. Look, if I had only known, of course, everything will be forgiven if you are willing to go. They got the smallest size space shoot suit for George and all the other things he needed for the flight. Then they helped him put them on and showed him how to use them. When everything was ready, a truck drove up with a special television. Let's look at this. This is a checklist. You ever had a checklist before where you put down the things that you need? Let's see what it says. One, a space suit complete with shoes and gloves. Two, a space helmet. Three, an oxygen tank. What is oxygen? Is that what helps us breathe? Have you ever heard of O2 oxygen? It's what's in the air that we need to breathe. Emergency rockets, because that's how he's going to get out of the, the um, spaceship when he bails or jumps. And a parachute, because he needs that parachute when he jumps. Okay, so when everything was ready, that a, a truck drove up with a special television. Can you see it? It had a special television screen mounted on it to watch the flight. They all got on and they were off to the launching site. They checked all the controls of the spaceship, especially the lever that opened the door. Why did they want to make sure that lever would open? Why do you think? Maybe so George could get out when he needs to jump out. So it says, they checked all the controls of the spaceship, especially the lever that opened the door and George tried it too. Wow. The great moment had come. Look at that. George waved goodbye and he went aboard. He's a brave little monkey too. He's not just curious, but he's brave. The door was closed. Professor Wiseman began to count. Count with me, everybody. Five, four, three, two, two and a half, no, two, one, go. He pressed the button and the ship rose into the air, slowly first and then faster and faster and higher and higher until they could no longer see. What do you think is going to happen? Look at it rising way up there. It's going fast too. They could no longer see it in the sky. But on the screen, they saw George clearly all the time. Look at him right there. Now the moment had come for George to bail out. Remember, he's got to jump out. Professor Wiseman flashed the signal. They watched the screen. George did not move. <gasps> Why didn't he pull the lever? In a few seconds, it would be too late. The ship would be lost in outer space with George in it. They waited anxiously. At last, George began to move, slowly, as if in a daze. He was groping for the leather lever, meaning trying to find it. There, he grabbed it. The door opened. Hooray! Everybody said hooray. George was on his way. Look at that. George was on his way. Out of the blue, an open parachute came floating down to earth and the truck raced over to the spot where George would land. Look at that. What's his face look like? Does he look happy? He does. What a great thing for a curious little monkey to do. Look, what a welcome for George. Look, Professor Wiseman hung a big golden medal around his neck because he said, you are the first living being to come back to earth from a space flight. And on the medal, it said, to George, the first space monkey. Then a newspaper man took his picture and everybody shouted and cheered. 
even the farmer and his son and the kind woman from next door who had worked for hours to get the water out of the room. So he had another friend help him get the water out of the room. His neighbor said, I'm proud of you, George, said the man with the yellow hat. I guess the whole world is proud of you today. It was the happiest day in George's life. The end. What a great thing for a curious little monkey to do. Okay, so I hope that all of you stay curious, be curious, think about things, wonder about things, investigate, experiment, be curious. Okay, bye. Ciao.